Welcome back to LearnPianoLive.com. My name is Jamin, and as you can tell from the countdown clock, the lesson is about to get started. In case you're new with us, there's a few things I'd like to show you to help you throughout the lesson. So this lesson is about reharmonization. That means we're going to take an existing song and we're going to find new chords to play over the same melody. Now, that means that you're probably going to need to already know about chords and keys and probably intervals and probably have already several songs that you can play well enough that they actually sound like the song. But even if you can't do that, uh, you might pick up some interesting theory bits along the way. So uh, feel free to join us. The goal, though, is not this song. It's not about the song that we're working on. It's really about taking the, the concepts you like, the reharmonizations, the substitutions that you like from this lesson, and then applying them to other songs that you already know how to play. These lessons are always guided and shaped by your questions. And if you're live with us today, there's a couple different ways you can do that. One is in the public live chat and the other is the Ask Jamin a Question button where you can ask me a question privately and I won't share your identity in case you're afraid that your question is stupid, but it's not. If you're in the archives though, then just open up the survey at the end of that. There's a place where you can ask your question. I will say I frequently get questions from students in the archives watching a lesson from six months ago and I have no idea what they're talking about. So please try to be as specific as possible. If you're watching this at LearnPianoLive.com, there should be a PDF and an MP3 button right next to this video. The PDF will often have additional video links inside so you can get more in-depth instruction on each of the topics. And if you're the kind of person who likes to print out the PDF so you can make the same notes on your physical version as I'm making during the lesson, now would be the time to do that. The MP3 is just a play-along track so you can practice more after the lesson. In traditional lessons, a teacher is going to actually present some new concept for maybe five or ten minutes every couple weeks. The rest of the time is going to be spent applying and refining those concepts. Well, here I'm spouting off hours of new information every week, so it's totally unreasonable to expect you to actually absorb all of that. Instead, the goal of these live lessons is for you to find some little nugget of something that makes sense but it is a bit of a challenge and for you to go practice it because practice is where all the improvement's gonna happen. So don't feel bad if you have to leave the live lesson when you find that little thing that you're gonna practice. And of course, if I'm going too fast, you can always rewind the live lessons or replay in the archives as much as you want. If these live lessons start feeling random or meandering, it's because they are on purpose. So if you're the kind of person who wants classical training with a step-by-step -step method, then you're going to want to check out Kloppel Academy on the website. It's included in your live lesson subscription, so you can do both or either. And the upper levels are seriously hard work, but it's going to take you all the way from ground zero all the way up to being ready to enter any major music college as a piano major in classical or jazz. And thankfully, I think that's about all we need to cover before the lesson. So if you'd stick around afterwards and fill out the survey, I would love your feedback. But for now, let's have some fun and make some music. Welcome back to LearnPanelLive.com. I think, I don't know, I'm terrified. This is the incomparable Kendra running everything. <laughs> The Hi. whole world. She's running everything. That, yes. Kay. Guess what? So I, because I've had this last week off of school, I've mm -hmm. gotten to work a lot on the story I'm trying to write. Yes. Uh -huh. And I've rewritten like a bunch of stuff. Uh -huh. And now I only have like eight chapters left of my second draft. Okay. So I think I can get it done this next week and then draft two. Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. so excited. That's so, really cool. Yeah. Yay. This seems like a great opportunity for, for people who <laughs> want to create things because... Apparently the world is not? just on hold for a yeah. little while while we all create yeah. things. Yeah. Okay. But we're gonna do music anyway. We're gonna do music anyway. So yeah. Absolutely. I think we're gonna do music. We'll see. It's a <laughs> bad idea to upgrade all of your hardware and your software and change your schedule all at the same time because crap falls apart. I think that's what we're learning. We do what we can. Okay. Well. <laughs> whatever. Here we go. Um, this is the uh, theme from The Office, and we uh, already learned how to play all of the notes. So I'm just going to play through this thing. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Uh-huh. You've got to go to uh, Far Tablet, I think, is our only hope. Uh, far Not Far Sheet. Tablet. Far Tablet. Oh, that's the one. Great. Cool. Yeah, hit us. There we go. Got it. <laughs> um, we'll fix that, too. Make a note of that one. That'll go on the list. Um, so we already played this thing before, so if you can't play this much, uh, that's okay, but you need to watch the other lesson on how to play this because we're take this is our starting point to go from... Uh... And 
then we also played the other thing. That thing, we already did a lesson on that. So now we're just going to change those chords. So what you're saying here is uh, all these chords that I'm playing, a G and a B minor, an E minor, and a C. And some of those are in inversions and stuff. And we're also going to slow it down uh, a little bit so that it'll be easier for, easier for us to play the melody and the chords at the same time. None of the stuff that I'm about to do is stuff that you need to do until we get to the end of the lesson. You're like, hey, I really like how we did that one thing. I want to steal that. The biggest uh, part of this lesson is just paying attention to what kinds of changes I'm making so that you can make these same types of changes on songs that you perhaps like more than the Office theme. So uh, you're going to want to use this tool right here, learnpianolive.com slash rehar and uh, the, all the steps are here that are given to you on your PDF because this whole thing right here is um, just like the steps of what you would do options for reharmonization uh, changing up the chords to any song so the very first thing no matter what you you're gonna do on your reharm your very first two steps are adding the sevens nines and sixes which are also 13s um, and playing the five of any chord before it so let's talk about how all of that works so we can get these first two steps in um, so all this means is that uh, on our G chord, and all the ones that follow, we're going to add in sevens and, and nines, perhaps. So maybe maybe some sixes. So this is a G chord. If we want to add in a seven, then we could just play the note that is in the scale, uh, the G major scale, because we're in the key of G, like we talked about when we did the uh, the tutorial on the song. So adding in the seven, the note that is uh, not the one, but not the three, not the five, but two notes away from the five would be the seven. And then you could also add in the 9 if you wanted to. And maybe the 13. That's a pretty cool chord right there. That's a G13, G913, G7913. Or you could just add in only the 7 or only the 7 and the 9 or only the 13 if you wanted to. That'd be a 13 or the 6 right there. So that G, let's turn that into a G major 7. And then a B minor 7. So this chord, instead of just playing the B minor, we'd play the B minor 7. Instead of playing the E minor, we'd play the E minor 7. And then instead of playing the C, we'd play the C, what would be the major 7, because uh, in the key of G, if we follow the rules of the key of G and play all the diatonic 7 chords, all the uh, 7 chords that don't break the rules of the key of, of G, um, then this, we'd end up playing this B, because a B is in the key of, of G. That doesn't break any rules. And we could play the C major seven right there. So it's something like this. Those are now our four chords, the exact same roots. We haven't really reharmonized anything. We just added some extensions to the chords and we'd have something like this. Something like that. So we haven't really changed much of it at all. Um, the other thing that we're allowed to do is um, add in, and I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna skip the the intro part because the intro part is basically just literally the chords. Like it's a G chord is broken up, like we talked about in the tutorial. So I'm gonna skip that because it's literally playing the chords. It's not. There's not really a melody in there. So we're gonna skip ahead to this part down here. Bum, bum. That's the part I'm going to be playing on the top of these chords. So then the other thing that we can do is add in the, um, well, first let me put the sevens on here. That's G major, that's a B minor seven, E minor seven, C major seven, G major seven, B minor seven, E minor seven, C major seven, G major seven. That's it. Cool. So the other thing we're going to do is play the fives before these chords. And uh, Kendra, this is where you jump in and give us some some random ideas. I'm going to have you pick any four of these chords. Um, and it looks like your battery's dead, oh. so you just have to jump in I'll and, just and tell me. I'll talk. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. That was my timer for secret information, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even called secret information. <laughs> I mean, not secret information. Feature of the day. A feature Sorry. of the day. That's what okay. I meant. First so what pick, no, first pick four random chords for me. We're going to stick on this. Any right random now. chords yeah. mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. um, uh, no, I'm sorry. Of these ones, like pick pick random chords that we're playing. 
Oh, B minor. B minor. Okay. G. G. E minor. E minor. Cool. One C. more. C. All right. Cool. So we're gonna before the B minor here the G, the E minor, and the C. We're gonna play the five of those. So one way to do that is to um, just ask ourselves, like when we're playing the the B minor chord, what is the five of that chord? If we're playing the one, the three, and the five, when we play a B minor, then the five would be. F sharp. So we're going to say F sharp over here. Now there's a way to do it that with the circle of fifths too, but if you're already to the point where you're playing the chords, you can just look at the chord and then it'll it will tell you what the five of it is. So we're going to play an F sharp chord, probably an F sharp seven before that B minor seven. Then we also said before the G, we would play whatever the five of G is. And the five of G is a D. It's sure. working now. Cool. Got hey, it. you're there. Nice. <laughs> I'm just hanging out now. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, um, then before the E minor, the five of the E minor is B. So right here, we'd play a B7. And then before the C here, we'd play the five of a C is a G. So we play a G7 right here. So that's just adding in the sevens before some random chords. So that would sound something like this. One more time. Did Wait, that just glitch the same I, way it did before? I think so. That's yeah. annoying. Yeah, I don't know what Kay. that is. I don't know what it is either. It's I upgrading the all the software. the visual is now off system. with the audio. Okay. I hate that so much. Okay. <laughs> um, so one more time. like all of those except for what was it the f sharp i don't really care for that one the f sharp seven the i'd have to oh now i do i think i want to put it right before the i would like i want to push this one over though so this is the part where like it gets to um like you get to do a little bit of art with this stuff so we're we're, we're gonna take whatever our ear says that should happen and just follow that so i think this b minor if i push this b minor over to here b minor seven then that should leave room right here for the f sharp to feel a little bit more comfortable f sharp seven so if i do that let's see if that sounds better it might not i like that better so yeah, so it is the F sharp before the B minor, but I'm just nudging the B minor over so that there's more room for the F sharp seven. And you're really wanting to do the feature of the day, aren't you? No, I was just gonna say the chat says it's only a little bit off. It's not oh. that bad. So <laughs> okay, I just wanted to let you know. But we can do feature of the day. Let's <laughs> let's not. Uh, okay. I want to keep going on this. Okay. Uh, so we put fives before a bunch of these chords, and at that point, it's time to do some real reharm stuff uh, because now we have some fives to work with and stuff. So uh, if we pick some random thing out of here, tritone subbing dominant chords. So a dominant chord is just a chord that says seven, like all the ones we just inserted say all, all of them say seven. So uh, Kendra, you're going to pick which of these we're going to tritone sub. We just added in four of them. On your recommendation, we did the F sharp seven, we did the D seven, we did so the- So I can usually, you know, um, comprehend the kids' lessons yeah. most of the time. Okay. I don't know what this means. Do you know what we've done so far? Yes. You understood adding in the sevens? Yes. You added understood adding in the fives before a chord? Yes. At looking at a chord and saying, what's the five of this? And then just inserting that before yes. the chord happens. Okay, cool. Then uh, I'll show I you what the tritone sub. I can't say I could play it, but I understand. Dad. That's all we're going for. Okay. That's cool. Because the goal here is for someone to take one thing that they liked and do that one time in one of their songs. Yeah. So whatever they're working on, like going, okay, well, I really liked that concept. Can I fit that one concept in somewhere in my song? Uh, okay, cool. So then uh, which of these seven chords, let's do two of them, tritone subs for any two of these chords, the seven chords we have. 
Any two of them. Any two of them. Either the Ooh. F sharp, the D, the B, or the G. The B. The B and the G. And the G. Okay. I don't know. Cool. Yeah. So we'll keep the first line relatively normal. And then right here, we're going to do the tritone subs of these. So uh, tritone, three tones, three notes, three letters. We're going to go three letters away, three whole steps away from the B. Three whole steps away from a B is uh, that's one whole step. Oh, I thought, that's are two you whole quizzing steps. me or? Oh, kind of. Sorry. Three whole I, steps away from a B is an F. It. I would so. have totally gotten that. Okay. So all we're going to do is we're going to literally substitute an F7 for a B7. It's because they're three, they're a tritone away. They're six half steps or three whole steps away. So we're going to just play an F7 right here. I really need my pen to work for this. This is not going to happen if I don't have a pen. <laughs> this is the perfect day for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is there a way to like refresh it <laughs> I've refreshed everything in my life today <laughs> that's how I try to solve my problems <laughs> refresh oh uh, yeah it definitely sees that there's a pen there it just isn't putting it's, ink on the it's screen not one to put, it's not one to put ink on the, on the screen okay we'll try resetting that um, so that in place of that B7, we're going to play, play with an F7 as soon as my pen starts working again. And then in place of the G7, we're going to put a what, Kendra? This time it is a quiz because we need to burn just a little bit of time until my pen works again. Wait, so you want... Okay, so I was kind of focusing on the glitches. Yeah, but, uh -huh, me too. So can you... Okay, so you found the F by finding three whole steps after the B... Right? Yes. Uh huh. So, so the then, G is what be... am I supposed to find the three whole steps after of, like the G? Give me right now. Now my fingers don't even work on this thing. I can't pinch and zoom anymore. I've never, I've literally never had this issue before. Of course not, because that would be ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> so three whole steps away from G is what? Um. Wait, 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 wait. Just give me one. Oh, okay. Or you can just do it. Six half steps away. Got it. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. gonna be a C sharp. Mm -hmm. Yep. Did you see how we get that? I no? do, yes. Okay. So six half steps away from a G is a C sharp, and I literally can't do this lesson without a pen. So uh, go ahead and give us that uh, stupid this, screen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. It's all transparent. Hang on one sec. Okay. Should I just put it? <laughs> Goodness. Are you kidding me? What? Okay. It's working. That's all right. Come oh, back. Oh, it's working? Okay. I'm just going to like... Cool. Okay. So then uh, we have a B7. We're going to take that out and put a F7 in there. Tell you what, this this lesson should not go in the archives. That's for sure. I uh, think it should. The world should see it's this. very entertaining. That is C sharp seven right here. <laughs> You've got it. Oh my goodness! All right. You should definitely my put it. You've got the coronavirus. Uh, so then, <laughs> that's disrespectful on so many levels. Um, here's our song now. C sharp seven, but I did like the other one. Let's try that again. This is the F sharp seven. Right here, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make this one work. Yeah, so I just don't like the C-sharp one, uh, but it was the right idea. It's just the melody really conflicts with, like, here's my C-sharp chord, and here's my melody. That actually, if that was a flat, flat nine, that should work. I'm going to end up falling in love with that, aren't I? <gasps> No, I'm not. So I'm, I'm going to get rid of the C sharp one, and we're going to keep the, what was the other one? The F7. That F7 is pretty cool. Uh, I really feel like it would have worked out here, though. This one. Mm, maybe it wouldn't have. Nope, it wouldn't have. So we're just going to keep the one tritone sub there, I guess. Yeah, we could also do this. Um, no, it wouldn't work there either. 
Nope. So that's the only one we're going to keep is the F7. And then let's do a few more of these things here. Modal borrowing. Cool. So this is uh, Kendra. You'll need to uh, you'll stick with me for this one. So modal borrowing is when we take our key, um, like for example, we're in the key of G, and we got chords from the key of G. Right? Yes. There, we're just going to pretend for a second like we're in the key of G minor. This is called the uh, parallel minor. Got it. So uh, you, a lot of people know about the relative minors. This is the parallel minor, so it's the same exact root. But instead of playing G major, we're going to play G minor. And play all the chords that would go with that. Ah, uh, no, uh-uh. So then we're going to pick one of those chords, uh, usually either the two chord or the four chord, and we play that instead. So um, I don't really see any uh, two chords or four chords in here, but uh, we're going to play maybe the on the four chord, one of these two four chords. I'm really wanting to do the last one because I, I already know what it's going to sound like, um, but we can do the other one. Which which one of these two would you want to do? The, the last one. The last one because I said so. I shouldn't have said that. People are going to think of it. Yeah. You picked that because I told you to. I would have picked it okay. anyway. So here's the deal. Uh, we're going to keep the same root. So we're playing a C chord. We're still going to play a C chord. But we're going to play the C chord that would show up in the key of G minor. And in the key of G minor, the four chord, one, two, three. Oh, is it a minor? Is a C minor. Yeah. Yeah. So right there, we're going to play a C minor. Wait. It's the same root. I just realized something. Yes. I'm pretty sure everyone yes. else has already realized this, oh. and I'm way behind. Uh -huh. But... I just realized in a major key, the four huh. is always major. And in a minor key, it's minor. You got it. Cool. Pretty much. So um, the the diatonic triads for a uh, major key are going to be major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, and then we're back to the one every single time. The one chord is always going to be major. The two chords are always going to be minor. The three chords are always going to be minor. Is so everything like swapped or something? Everything is like swapped. Yes. Uh-huh. Wait. Yes. What's the kind seven? Of. The seven is major. So we'd what? go, yeah. So let's go, actually, real quick here, let's talk about uh, parallel keys. So I'm going to go to the key of C because it's easier to see. Ah. So uh, we've got major, minor, minor, major. I'm a dad. A major, minor, diminished, and then major. So that's the one, the two, the three, the four, the five, the six, the seven, and then the one. Cool. If we went to the relative minor key, the A minor key, we could see pretty easily here that the one chord is minor, the two chord is diminished, the three what? chord is major, the four chord is minor, the five chord actually should be major in a minor key, so that could be major or minor. Ooh, I think I wrote a song like that. You did, uh-huh. Yeah, you've I've written a lot of songs like that. Several. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then the seven chord is major, and the uh, six chord is major, the seven chord is major, and then the, the one chord is minor. Again. That's cool. So it goes minor, diminished, major, minor, probably major, 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 and then uh, minor. So I uh, love how like when major fours are just thrown in there randomly. Sounds great. Major fours? Oh, yeah. in, in a minor key? In a key? minor key. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are way out in the weeds now. Sorry. Okay, no, that's all, it's all good. It's good stuff. So, um, so what we're going to do right here is just take the uh, four chord of a minor key, which would be minor, and so we're going to keep that same root, that C, but this time we're going to play it as a minor chord, and uh, that's going to sound something like this. So that's our uh, minor right there. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Yeah. So it's a barred chord. Um, let's do one more though, just because, just because, because we, we haven't yet. Um, so we could do like uh, the, I'm not going to like that at all, but uh, the B right here in uh, the key of, uh, of G major would be a B minor. But if we were in the key of G minor, that would be... A B flat oh, my mic's not major. On. B flat, yes. Yeah, so it'd be a B flat major. So I don't think I'm gonna like that at all, but we'll see. Maybe I'll love it. Uh, ooh, yeah. 
Ooh. Oh, do I? Oh. Maybe. It'll help if I play it right. not too bad actually i'm gonna hang on to that b flat i like it um also it's killing me here that we're going from a, an f sharp no i'm not allowed to do that yet i'm gonna do it at the end i want to change that one for sure also we need to start messing with these guys over here because those two are like the last two guys that are like not touched at all in the song so we get to that part and it, like everything sounds really cool and funky and then we get to that part and it's just like boring so whatever this is let's do something weird on those two chords because they have not been messed with at all Alter dominant when pointing to a diatonic minor. <laughs> sure, why not? We can't do that over here because we're not pointing to a diatonic minor. A diatonic minor means a core, a minor chord that is sh seen in the key of the scale that we're, we're playing, in the key that we're playing in. So we're in the key of G. So a diatonic minor would be any minor chord that is actually in the key of G. Kendra, do you know of any? minor chords that we're playing in this song that are actually in the key of G. A B minor. A B minor. Nice. Cool. E nice. minor. An E minor. Yes. Cool. And F. Sh oh, wait, wait. No, it's not. Never mind. Sorry. Cool. So I, the, I tried. <laughs> yeah. The B minor chord and the E minor chord are actually both in the in the key. So let's do this. Uh, this E right here, we're pointing to an E minor chord, that's a diatonic minor chord in the key of G. And so right here, instead of playing a B minor seven, we're gonna play a B seven with as many alterations as we possibly can. Like uh, we could put in a flat nine, we could put on a sharp 11, you we could, could put in a flat 13. F sharp minor diminished, <laughs> whatever oh. that is. Yeah, we could actually, <laughs> we could turn that one into a, um, let's see here. Oh no. <laughs> yes, <laughs> technically, you're right, I really want to. Later on, no, nope, yep, later on, we have to ch change this one into a, um, that one's sacred. I want to change that one into a half diminished chord, and I want to show you why later. But this, for right now, this B, B7 thing, we're going to put like a flat nine in it, like that, and maybe put in a sharp 11, uh, and a flat 13, a flat 13, like that. We got a flat nine and a sh Wait, why does that feel re weird? What am I doing wrong here? There. There we go. So we got our sharp nine. Uh, we got a three, a, f a seven, and a flat 13. So I'm going to play that chord right there. B7, flat nine, sharp 11, flat 13, or whatever al other alterations you want to do. You could just do like a flat seven if you wanted to, or just a sharp 11 or something. But uh, that's going to go something like G. I need this chord. Yeah. How do I get that? I'm just going to play that. I would need the, sh the F sharp first, though. Okay. I'm hoping this next one is something we do with that C and that G, because otherwise... Uh... Please, please, please. Add two fives or three, six, two fives before a chord. Wonderful. Let's do that. Uh, we've got this G that we're landing on here. And before that, we're going to just take out this chord and we're going to put in a three to a six to a two to a five. We could just do two, five, one or just six, two, five, one or three, six, two, five, one. I don't know. Kendra, what do you think we should do? Um, three, six, two, five. Because I already put it up there. I'm asking her after I'm saying, which is always a mistake. <laughs> Three, six, two, five. So what is the five of G? Um, um, D. 
D. D. Uh huh. Cool. So we're gonna put a D right there. Uh, what is a two of G? I should, I should probably pop back. Probably. In. What's the okay. two of a D or of G? Of uh, A. An A. Mm -hmm. Yep. And in the key of G, it's an A minor. Yes. Because the two chords in minor keys are always right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What's the six of the key of G? It is an E. And is an E minor. And what is the three of G? B minor. B minor. So B minor to E minor to A minor to D7 to G would be a 3, 6, 2, 5. I think it's going to be way, way too fast. <laughs> it's kind of fun. I don't know. We'll see. Why? It reminded me of like a Christmas song for some reason. It's totally every Christmas song that, uh, yeah, was, that was written in the 40s and 50s. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh. I'm gonna try it again. I'm not really. I like that as a B minor before more than what I have right now. That's surprising to me. Maybe I need to do that. Just play the chord first. That's what's happening. So I'm going to push this one back again. So this thing right here that I did where I pushed the B minor over um, to make room for the F so it ha had more space there. I liked that. But now that I've got this big fat B, B7 flat 9 sharp 9 chord, um, I need more space for that one to breathe. So I'm going to bring this thing back to here and put that as a B, I'll just say alt, like altered chord, like alter everything that you possibly can. Um, and then this one right here is going to be an F sharp seven uh, with the flat nine. So yeah, this will take a little bit of practice to make that work, but One more time. Maybe it would have started on the F. F. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to get rid of this G entirely. Here we go. This will work. So I'm going to get rid of the G because I need more space for that F sharp. And so, sorry, G. You got killed. F sharp 7, flat 9. So it'd be something like. Kind of like that. I'm still not really a big fan of that. That B alt. I should. I should like that. It's got everything that's cool in there. I'm just gonna stick with it. Yeah. So then, and it starts off. By the way, this is the same way that like all the jazz players play. Uh, Somewhere over the rainbow. Some. So um, I'm kind of like that's kind of nostalgic for me like oh yeah that's that's that one song that we do uh because it's got that octave leap somewhere over the rainbow and this one has bum, 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 bum. so it's kind of like somewhere over the rainbow so it worked out nicely K 
Okay, and then this thing right here still isn't working for me. Um, it's almost time for me to, to just alter these however I want. But let's do one last thing here. This might wreck the whole song. I always go too far. Augmented on dominant chords. So uh, we have a couple dominant chords here that uh, we have, still haven't messed with. I guess we have one dominant chord uh, that we haven't messed with, which is this F7. So then... Hmm. I need to not mess with that one because the melody is going to, um, maybe I can F seven augmented. So this is an F chord. This is an F augmented chord. This is adding in the seven to the F augmented chord right there. So I don't think I'm gonna like the sound of that one, but we, we can try that. Um, and then I'll start messing with the other things I want. Oh, this D right here. We had a, a minor or a dominant sitting right there. <laughs> we'll leave that one alone. Okay, so something before I mess with it like this. Now let's mess with it. Uh, so that's all the stuff that was just like randomly like selected stuff, not not stuff on purpose. Uh, things that are still bugging me. Um, the B alt, I think that's just my own incompetence. And maybe it's not. If I take a look at the notes, I should really like all of those. but I just don't. I think it's good because of that rainbow thing. And then this thing bug bugs me here. And I think it's just the B that bugs me because the B minor, because it's just so plain. And also it's got like this flat nine thing on it. So I think if I just change that to a B, B, seven, then the minorness of it wouldn't bother me as much. So right here. Yeah. Let's try that. Do I just like it? Do we just leave it like that? Let me try it one more time. <sighs> really? 
melody. I'm going to change that one to a B minor. It's bugging me too much. It really sounds like Somewhere Over the Rainbow to me in my head. And if that B alt might sound awesome, but I just can't get the other thing out of my head. Sorry. And I'm also going to sh alt, uh, I'm going to um, try to sub all of these guys here. So uh, the B, because I don't want to go B, E, A, D, G, that thing sounds stupid to me. sounds too dorky. I uh, like it's too much movement. But if I just go down by, uh, if I try to sub all these, try to sub for an E, Kendra, help me out here. What is a try to sub for an E? Get rid of the E. Uh, am I still doing the, the. Six half steps away yeah, from an E. Yes. From B. Hang from on. E. One, two, three, four, five, six would be B flat. Uh, B flat, cool. So I'm going to yeah. play a B flat here. And then instead of the oh, D. Oh, wait. Yes. You wanted me to go from E. From right? E, yes. yes. And then okay, we're going to try tone sub the D also. And a try tone sub away from a D is a. Four, five, six. A flat. A flat. So now my bass line, if I try tone sub every other one, instead of having to go B, E, A, D, G, can just go B, B flat, A, A flat, G. Oh, that's G. cool. Yeah. So I think I'm going to like that better. So I'm going to go. on the voicing on that but yeah oh my gosh did the audio just glitch back in it sync? did it glitch, i don't know i don't know anyway that would be cool Let me try all that together. That might be the one. I'm really digging that now. I just want to play that over and over. That's kind of calming now. It's the opposite of working in an office environment.
Okay, cool. Well, there are some ideas right there. And um, usually with this stuff, like you'll see that when I don't like something, I'll play it over and over because a lot of times something will really grow on me. Occasionally, it'll be something like this where it's just like it that, that B alt that should have sounded great just wasn't working at all um, for me. So we just had to, to change that out. So you pick the random stuff and then uh, you try it out. And if it doesn't work, then you just change it back to whatever it was before and uh, move on to the re next reharm concept. But there's some of them and... Uh, I, I can't say that I like it more than the original Office theme, but um, it is kind of a, a calming. If we just think of it as an entirely separate song, I guess, um, that could that could work as a thing. So, and it would, man, that'd be fun to solo over too. Yikes. Okay, but we're out of time. So maybe next time we'll solo over this thing. Um, I think actually next week we're doing like the Parks and Rec theme. We've got like 10 streams coming up this week. It's gonna, gonna be an insane week of streaming, as long as we can get all of our equipment together, which uh, as you can tell, whether it's together or not, whether it's working, we're still going to do the lesson. We're still going to be here. We're going to stream. Hopefully, things will get better as we go on. We've got, uh, it looks like, several hours of uh, lists of things to fix for tonight. So with tomorrow, our stream is even better. And uh, thanks for joining us. And until next What's time. What's your motto? Oh, mess up. Explore, mess up, have fun. Bye.